Sorry guys. Accidentally booted everyone out by accident. So sorry. They should be back in a moment now. Hi, Jenny. Hi. Nice Hi, lovely to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. I'm just waiting for Quiva now. Perfect. So is, is this gone live yet or does it delay? No, it's gone live now. Okay. We've got like 25 people in here now. Okay. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Michelle and your name again is? Um, Michelle and then Cleve is coming in in a moment. And now. Coming in. Yeah, yeah. No, it's been nice chatting to you the past the past week or so. <laughs> well, definitely, it's been great getting to know you. Oh. And hopefully, the slide will just get to know you even more now. Yeah, I'm excited. We're we're, <laughs> we're basically look at all these nice people joining. Um, yeah, it's it's nice to spend a Friday together, like just kind of a group of us. Definitely, I, I, yeah. I think I've spotted some students joining as well, which is nice. So thank you for joining. Yay. <laughs> I did. I, to say hi to you. Sorry, they're popping in to say hi. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, the, the, the yeah. more the, the more the better. We had done some workshops today, actually, some acting workshops, and um, really? yeah, it, it's nice to all get together on a Friday. I think during lockdown, we've all kind of come together more for this type of thing. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Hello, I'm Quiva. Hi, hi, Quiva. How are you? Nice to meet you. I'm good. Sorry about that. I was in it a second ago and then I was gone. I probably, yeah, kicked, I, I probably kicked you out by accident by joining. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we fixed it. <laughs> yep, up and running now. Okay, so hi everyone. Um, my name is Michelle, and I'm working for Ireland this year. And I'm joined with um Quiva, who's also working with Perform Ireland this year. And today we have our lovely guest, who's joining us for the Q and A live stream. And that is the lovely Jenny Dixon. And she's going to be answering all your questions today. And you can still pop with them in your comment section and in the question box as well. We'll be answering all the questions we can. And look forward to kicking this off. Yay. Thanks, thanks for having me. I'm excited to, to spend the, ne the next, uh, the next uh, I, I'm laughing at some of the comments coming in. It's nice. I've spotted some more, some more students and friends joining and everything. So um, yeah, no, it's, it's lovely. It's a, it's a lovely idea to, to do. So thanks for having me. No problem. Um, so first of all, we just want to say congratulations on winning Best Supporting Actress. Of, um, just I think it was yesterday. We yeah. saw the announcement. So congratulations on that. Th thanks so much. Thank you. Yeah, it was a lovely surprise. I, I had I had shot that that movie a couple of years ago, and then you know, like films, and it's a feature length film, but whether it's a feature length or a short film, they do the festival circuit, and I got an email off the director saying. Not sure if you saw a few weeks ago, you were nominated for, for Best Supporting Actress. W were you away from social media? And I guess I was for a bit, because sometimes I miss things. And um, he said, well, well, you won. So, so yeah, that, that, was, that was a lovely surprise to get. So. <laughs> I'll bet. That's not the only award you've ever won. You've also won an award for uh, The Funniest Female. So I was wondering if by any chance you could tell us your best joke. Oh, my God, that's a lot of pressure. I actually have Thank one, you. though. I have one. I used this before and I won a prize. So um, I'm gonna use this one again. <laughs> um, so my, my, my joke I will use is why did the skittle go to school? Why? why? Because I wanted to be a smarty. <laughs> it's a good one. It's a good yeah. one, it's a very good one. <laughs> I like little simple jokes that take like 10 seconds to tell. I don't care about it. <laughs> that was definitely a good one. <laughs> um, okay, so our next question that we have for you, first question actually, is how was the film, the film you won um, the award for, um, Full Circle? Like, what was it about? You could just tell us a bit about what it was about. Yeah, so it's, um, it's kind of, uh, it's, it, it's a, it's a sci-fi, but it's, it's not a, a usual sci-fi. It's mixed with a bit of like a, a war theme. So a, a guy returns from from uh fr from a war zone and he's quite um he's quite unsettled and disturbed and he comes across a friend who has troubles and 
uh, they 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 look to Newgrange, you know, Newgrange where the, the sun comes in and mm. lights it up and there's kind of like a lot of like folklore and, and magic around this. And and he wants to heal his wife. So he joins this circle, full circle. And it's about healing each other. So it's like sci-fi with like kind of a heart story. And and I play uh, the producer in the TV show and the love interest of uh, the guy who has a lot of problems. So that would be a very interesting kind of genre shift to be doing sci-fi compared to like Fair City. How did you find that, you know, shifting between genres? Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was really good. It was, so I, I think I just, I just finished shooting Fair City and, and then, then I, then I shot um, Full Circle. And, but I, I had, I had a little experience of that because when I joined Fair City, I was like the total ditzy character, didn't have a clue um and and just like a lot of comedy storylines you know so a lot of like light relief and then as the as the five years of my character kind of went in the show it turned quite dark so i i was doing i was doing stunts i had uh, gun scenes i had um some some yeah. scuffle type scenes and 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 my character killed the so, so i i guess i had gone from comedy into into drama and action and um so going into full circle it, it wasn't the genre that was such a surprise it was more that we had so much time to shoot it whereas in fair city i would have 12 scenes to shoot in one day in a busy storyline and 12 scenes of like three pages four pages each of dialogue so just so you, you'd you'd read it you'd shoot it and sometimes that would be it one take and it's, it's going to go air out to um three and a half million people Whereas with, with, with the film Full Circle, we shot like two scenes in a day as opposed to 12. So, so it wasn't so much the genre that surprised me. It was just so much extra time I had um, to, to, to play around with it. Yeah, that'd be a lot different. Yeah. And what would you say was um, the hardest, like, was there any hard parts about from adapting from being on TV all the time to switch into being in a film mode, would you say like the transition was pretty easy or like was it hard? Um, it's a good question. Yeah, I, I guess I'd gotten used to the fast pace of of soap and Fair City and RTE, and it kind of runs like a machine. So um, I I I had to kind of like get used to the slower pace of things being done on a movie set, uh, and um. Yeah, it was just, it was just a lot slower. So I more waiting around, whereas whereas uh, it's very snappy and quick uh, when you're shooting soap. So soap is a, is such a brilliant training ground because you've got to learn so fast uh, to learn dialogue. I remember one time, mm -hmm. um, it was a it was a, a Christmas um, a Christmas special we were shooting for for Fair City, and they just decided they were short on scenes. So I was in the makeup room. And they, they just landed a scene saying, oh, you're going to shoot that next. But I'd never read it. So luckily enough, I was in that kind of, um, that kind of training of like learning script really fast and, uh, and, um, and, and, and shooting that scene. So I, I read it in my dressing room. I had about 10 minutes. I was down on set and then we shot the scene. So the, yeah, the main difference is the speed of things. It can be a great thing. And then also... Um, there's pros and cons to this. Obviously, the more time as an actor, the great, the greater maybe you can make the scene. Um, but yeah, so so it's it's the it's the waiting around versus maybe some things being rushed or some things having more time will be the main difference between uh, TV and movies. It, and it also depends on the budget as well. So how many days they have to pay their crew, uh, so so as you can have more time with with a with a scene. So now that you've got more time in between shooting scenes, do you find yourself like reading books or getting into any hobbies? Um, good question. Good question. Uh, yeah, I always try to um, try to make the most of my time. Sometimes you just you just talk to other actors, especially if there's somebody funny on set. You just like, you know, you just you just bounce off them. So I actually had a friend, um, a, a, an actor friend of mine, John Duggan. He just ran just before this and. And another another friend rang earlier on, so they, they had perfect time timing, because um, I was doing acting workshops earlier on with some students. So 
hi to every all the students who might, might be watching there and then um that was that was a lovely workshop today but i had an actor friend call me just before that started and then another call today so i think i spend time um, especially if there's somebody funny on set just bouncing off them other times you might spend the time having a little sleep as well because it's such an early call time you know it's um you're up at 5 30 6 a.m in makeup um so if you have like an hour off where you're not in you're not in shooting uh they they have couches and sofas and things you can go and catch a little little uh cat nap very human thing to do yeah. go for a nap when it began <laughs> or tea lots of cups of tea hobby hobbies wise um music is always another one uh i i listen to a lot of like audible audiobooks is more so where, where i do that um i look up recipes i'm going to try because i love like trying out different plant-based recipes when i can or kind of healthy baking so yeah these would all be the things during during time that i that i might do or if i'm doing a workshop i might plan that or um yeah so it, it depends on on the day and how much energy I have and, and, and who's about. And um, you've been in acting for a good while now. What would you say has been your favorite role in times you've been, you've been on TV or in panto or doing acting in films? What would you say has been your favorite role? Um, whoa, it's like trying to- like Your most favorite. <laughs> the what, sorry? Your most favorite. Your most favorite, yeah. You love them all equally, like you'd love all children equally. Because um, I, I loved playing the fairy in Cinderella in the last Cheerios Panto. That was great. It was like 56. Um, uh, I, I'm doing a shout out to Shane. I see he's joining there from Waterford. I, I've, I'm seeing lo lots of people who message and everything joining, which is lovely to see. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm distracted. I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on everybody here. <laughs> Um, my favorite role, yeah, I loved playing the fairy in 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 Cinderella in the Cheerios Panther. That was lots of fun. So I got to dance and sing and go outside my comfort zone. Um, let me let me think. I I also shot like some comedy comedy scripts that were so funny that uh, I remember trying to trying to not laugh myself because it was written so well. So I had to keep such a straight face, but the the, the writing was so funny. It was just a, a moment of like, I don't know how, how I'm going to be able to keep a straight face. They were funny moments, but probably um, Carrie Ann in Fair City. How could I not pick that? Because I, I got five years of storylines uh, for airing four, four days a week. Um, and I got to play comedy and drama and I got to have like love triangles and, 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 and an affair with Mondo and then back to Deco Bishop and then and then Garda Maguire and it was just 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 lots of great fun and, and with like a lot of circle of um of friends some actors I knew outside of the show and some became friends on the show so because I got to and I got to do a big soap wedding and get married as well and that was like I think was it two years before I actually got married so I got to have like a rehearsal a trial run on tv and and try out wedding dresses so so yes yeah, so there was lots of great fun with, with Fair City and Carrie Ann so it, w it was a dream role because it's a really, a really nice character. But then she also had like this kind of mischievous side in the end. So um, obviously, as you said, uh, you've done a lot of characters and a lot of acting and genres. But before that, and currently, you're a teacher. So I was kind of curious, how do you get from teaching into acting, like as a career? Um, so trying to figure where, where, where to start with this one. I, I got into acting first of all because um, I'd broken up with a boyfriend and I was heartbroken and I needed to gain more confidence. So I figured I'll join an acting class. That'll make me confident. I'll make loads of friends and maybe I'll get a new boyfriend. So, so that was my reason for joining acting. So I did make lots of friends. Um, I, I, yeah, I'll just leave that. I've made lots, lots of, uh, lots of friends, but yeah, no, I, I, I absolutely love this. And um, I trained with Emmett Scanlon, who, who's in Hollyoaks and is doing lo lots of great things right now. Um, and he's in Kin as his latest one on RTE. So I just found out where he had studied and it was in LA. So I, at the time I was teaching, cause I had done a science degree. So I was, um, I was teaching science and maths. 
And as soon as the summer holidays came, I, I booked a flight to LA and I figured it'll be a challenge. I'll try it. I'll, I'll, um, I'll see, can I, can I be by myself in this city, not knowing anybody? And my travel agent had booked me into, is this the long version or the short version? I'll give you like the medium version. Medium version. version. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, um, I, I was booked into, um, a part of a hostel in LA by my travel agent. I didn't know LA. So it was a place, um, near Compton called Inglewood. And I was just there going, I'm here to do acting, but I was in totally the wrong part of LA because if anybody knows Compton or Inglewood, like yeah. that can be, that can be a tough place. Like I, I, I um, was in a, a petrol station one day and this guy said, oh ma'am, you're going, you're going to the beach today. And I said, oh no, no I, I'm just staying in, in the hostel across the way. And the guy behind the counter was going, no, like, don't, don't, don't talk to him. And I noticed he had these tattoos of like tears on his face. And apparently that's a, a, a gang symbol for people he has killed. So, so yes, that was a baptism of fire. And I knew I needed to get from, from Inglewood and Compton and go to West Hollywood, which is where it's the base of a lot of actors and, uh, and that. So, um, so yeah, so I went to, I went to West Hollywood finally after a couple of weeks of a baptism of fire and I auditioned for, um, for an acting school there. And thankfully, somehow I got into it and I was in, I was in uh, an amazing class of actors who really took me under their wing. I was the least experienced. And um, yeah, it was just, it was just a, a beautiful time. I studied, I studied comedy in LA for, for the three months there. And I, I then returned to teaching because um, I, you know, I was only doing this as a hobby and to get more confident. And um, then uh, I started getting more auditions. So after a while of going back and forth to LA and training and having, you know, great time, making great friends over there. And um, I, 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 I decided I, I would take a, a career break out of teaching. And um, I was, I didn't really have anything set up, but I, I had qualified for the visa for, for, for LA. And I figured I'm just gonna, I'm going to just go for it and, and I, I said to my, my principal at the time, I'm going to take a career break and, you know, uh, do some acting or, and, and he was very supportive. And he said, look, if you've got to live on banana sandwiches for a year, you go do it. <laughs> and, and, and I love banana sandwiches. So I took it as a sign to just go for it. And, <laughs> um, so I, I went over to LA and I got, I got, I got some good jobs. Um, I did, I did, I met the Kardashians on a job. I, I, I got to meet like really impressive people and, uh, an audition um, and um, Pretty Little Liars and some re 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 really cool jobs over there. And then I got a big job that would have like paid my bills and taken the pressure off. And I was really excited and then I lost the job. The job went, I didn't get it. And I was like, oh man, I'm back to like small paying jobs and can I do this? And um, so, so I went over to my friend in LA and I just like threw a tantrum and cried for the night. and. And um, so before I had left for LA though, um, I, I, and then when I'd taken a career break, I had, I, I had uh, got an audition for Fair City and they told me that they liked, they liked my audition, but I didn't look like the family. So they couldn't, they couldn't cast me. So I just thought they were being very polite and I went back mm -hmm. to LA and I carried on, you know, trying to make it work and doing the small jobs and going for the big jobs and, um, I see, I see somebody looking for a little hello there. So Shane Kennedy, I think it is, giving a little hello to Shane. <laughs> um, yeah, so I went back over to LA and I was back doing the audition circuit. And, and then, I, then I, I said, I got this, this big job that would have paid everything and sorted all, all my bills. And, and then I lost it and I was just, just back and forth again. So, and then I got a call from, from RT again the next day like the day after I had lost the big job yeah. and they said, we've a new role, um, a new role. If, uh, if you'd like to audition or come back and see us. So my mom was like, are you sure you want to leave LA and come back just for an audition? Because there's no guarantee. And I was like, yes, I'm on that, I'm on that plane tomorrow morning. I just had like a good feeling, you know? And when I came back, I, I thought it would be the same, 
the same setup again where I was competing with maybe um, eight actresses for the role, but they only called called me in this time. And I was being chemistry screen tested against George McMahon, who plays Mondo, to see that did we work. Um, and, I, and I knew George uh, McMahon from, from outside, from acting as well. Um, so yeah, that was, and Mondo's such a big character. I knew him growing up in the show. So I was like, what, what a crazy time. I'm, I'm, I'm being tested to like play Mondo's girlfriend. That's crazy. He's such a legend. Like, <laughs> So yeah, so you bet that I, I did my homework and I, I did every, every waking hour of homework on this, this new audition. And then a few days later after the audition, they said, um, we'd like to go ahead with the role of Carrie Ann. We'd like to offer you the part if you're interested. So I think I shot through several floors of the house with joy and said, I'd love to take this part. And it, it, was, it was a three week contract, but um, before I started shooting, they, they, they signed me for a year contract. It was a great, it was, I was very fortunate as an actor because sometimes you see actors coming in and they're hired for one day. And I saw them coming in, whereas I had the, I had the luxury of, of knowing I had a year contract. So I knew I could get better and I could get more relaxed and I could spot where the lighting is and where the sound. And Whereas you see actors coming in and I actually, I'd tell them, by the way, stand here because your camera's here. You know, it's so much harder being an actor who has three lines on, on a show or a film than an actor who's in, every episode so all the great shows on Netflix right now I'm spotting you know like I'm loving sex education on on, on Netflix great show I don't know if anybody's watching it um mm. and, and Atypical another one I loved uh and I'm looking at all the characters who are in all the sh all the episodes they can relax because you know they, they've so much scenes and dialogue whereas the actor who has one scene mm. is so, so, such a tougher job so Thankfully, I, I was signed for the year contract and um, and then and then got signed for another year and I, I, I did fi a five year contract in the end. So I'd always been kind of teaching acting workshops and I, I do love science. I do love acting. I love both. I was talking today about the left and the right side of the brain. Um, so. Yeah, it's, it's kind of it's being able to be diverse and adaptable as an actor that you bring all your skill set to an audition so auditions coming in now i i uh, yeah i'm not hopefully that 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 answered some of some of the question about how i went from teaching to acting and how i do, do both sometimes perfect yeah and just one question came up to mind when you were talking about um how you got you lost the part but you kept going so what would you say, like, what kept you going? What, what did, like, what stopped you from just saying, I can't do this, I'm, yeah. I'm just going to give up? Because I know that happens to a lot of people. You just give up and you're just like, I'm not going to get any roles. This is just the end of the road. I'm just going to go back to what I know. So what stopped you from doing that and just having that motivation to keep going and yeah. continue acting? It, it, it's a really good question. And, and I, I sometimes get people messaging me on, you know, how did you get into RTE? How did you get into a show? How... And sometimes people might just see the the reward, or they they don't see all the times that you you're like floored, you know, like oh, that would have been a great audition. I got down to the last two. Like just recently, I, I auditioned for for the Disney movie, and I got down to the last two again. And and so so I'm actually tr I'm trying trying to remind myself of the advice. Like you say, what what did you do? I'm trying to think. Remember the first time I didn't get I didn't get for a city, and they said thanks, but no thanks. I just thought they were being very um being very, very polite i remember i guess two things at the time one was i was so honored to be called in for such a you know so many great actor friends of mine haven't been called in and they're brilliant actors or they're called in and they get like three days um so the fact that i got signed for a year uh was was just a luxury a lot of actors don't get. So I was just really grateful to be called in. And they, Brian Cranston, I'm not sure if you know the actor from Breaking Bad and Malcolm in the Middle and that. I've just, I've just finished reading his, his book, which is, which is very good. And 
he talks about how your job as an actor is when you're in the audition room, that's your performance. So the fact I got to perform in front of all these top producers in RTE, that to me was like, oh, that was brilliant. Wow. Like, and I didn't, I didn't really expect anything beyond that. So I was really grateful to get called in for it. Um, and then when I got called back a second time and found out afterwards they wrote the part based on my first audition that they liked and you know little tweaks it was like wow this is crazy and the part I got the second time was such a better role uh with yeah just just such a dream role it was a much bigger part so this the smaller part I didn't get led to the bigger part that came so I tried to remind myself of these things and then the second thing is that I just love it like I love performing I love script I love creating a character and so um I loved it too much to give up and I was also too, too honored that I was called in uh by one of the sh one of the country's longest running show um yeah they were the two reasons why and it's good because I got to remind myself of that sometimes you know so, so just recently when I get down to the last two and it's like no I'm like oh I would have loved that part but you just gotta remind yourself of the times um yeah, the, the other times that something bigger came through, a better part and a more suited part. And then the parts that are for you will always be for you, you know? Um, yeah, they'll never go to somebody else because only you can play them exactly like that. So that would be my tuppence worth on that. Speaking of like creating characters yourself, do you think you'd ever move on and like go out of acting and go behind the camera as like a director or, or a producer or even a writer or anything? Um, I do love writing, and I've I've uh, I've written so, some material. I I've written some poems. I've uh, written some short films. Um, I get ideas for characters. Uh, so. And, I, and I've done some writing for magazines and, and newspaper columns and that. So writing is something I love. Uh, when I was in LA, myself and some friends put together a short film over there. That was a lot of fun. Uh, so, um, yeah, never say never. Definitely it's something that, that I enjoy, but I also hugely enjoy performing. So, uh, yeah, I would do both. Sure. Write your own characters and play them yourself. Say that again? You'd write your own characters and then play them yourself? Yeah, but I'd also give jobs to all my friends too. I'd write all them in too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just going to pop in and see what kind of questions people are asking. I know that people are just putting questions in for you, Jenny. Um, so I have one question over here. What inspired you to start acting? Um, so I guess it was originally it was just to be more confident and to to meet new people and um, to yeah be more confident to meet new people and just get a new hobby that that was the first thing and then I went whoa this is great I need more of this so yeah and who was your favorite person to work with favorite person to work with oh there's lots there's lots so not the not the favorite person I met, but the favorite person to work with. Uh, I I was only just telling a workshop today that I I I studied with Keegan Michael Key. I'm not sure if if, if people know. He, he, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, big fan of him. Yeah, he's he's so great. So I originally was the class I auditioned to get into. Uh, he was in that class of twelve actors, and I, I didn't know at the time. Deal he was, and he's obviously become a huge deal since. But I I loved working with him doing comedy and because yeah he just lights up the room like so, but I mean up, like loads of the cast in Fair City are amazing, and and then there's just so many great Irish actors as well that that I've worked with so it's hard to it's hard to pick one because it depends on the script it depends on on the production. 
So for like anybody who would be starting just to get into acting themselves, do you have any like tips for people or about nerves or auditioning or anything? Um, well, it's, yeah, sometimes I get asked, I get asked about that and, you know, how, how I did it or, um, so, uh, I guess just from my own point of view, I never thought that I would make any money from acting. I never thought, not that I'm crazy rich or anything, that makes it sound like, like I'm crazy rich, but um, I, I always just wanted it as, but well, not wanted, I always just thought it was gonna be a, a cool hobby. I never considered it like, I need to do this as a career. You know, um, I had trained in science and I was working in a lab and then I was teaching, so, it was just, a, it was just a, a lovely, brilliant hobby that was exciting. But then I started getting some bigger auditions and then I started thinking, what if I could make a living off it? What if I gave up my other jobs? And that was, a t that was when I went to LA and, and I, I achieved my goal, you know. Um, didn't become as rich as the Kardashians, but I, I managed to pay bills and that, that was my goal. So, um, and from just acting. So, so yeah, the advice to me, uh, uh, that I think would be do it because you love us because there's so many great actors I know who aren't working um, and they're brilliant because it just depends on a look what they're casting uh, the show so advice on acting would be just love us and train all the time and and also some of the best actors I met over, over in LA I remember I did this workshop and that this this lady uh, came in and I guess you know she was she was a little older than than the others and she came in late and she just took up the script and she she apologized for being late and then she just said oh I'll do my part now and she'd never seen this script before and she she did the piece and I was like crying watching I was going oh my god how did you get so much emotion and that and I said to her afterwards I said please tell me you're on some huge show. You, you need to be on some huge show. And she's, oh yeah, well the reason I got a little delayed was there's a show, there's a show called um, uh, Teen Wolf on MTV, you might've heard of it. And yeah, that was a big show. I was like, oh, phew, I'm so glad you're on it. But there she was in a training class, even though she was on a huge MTV show, she was going into a workshop. So I love that. I, I love that idea that you're always training, you're always learning. Um, no matter what level you go to. I met some, some really big actors in LA and they were like, I don't know what my next job is. You just gotta keep training and keep training, and keep training and auditioning. And they were huge actors. So, so that, that humbleness of always learning and never, but then also my huge basis was, I just love this. And imagine like, then it became a career, do you know? But I, I never went in going, so, so it depends on your reasons for doing it. Are you doing it to be famous? Or are you doing it because you just love it and you can't get enough of it? And you probably get access a lot. Well, for aspiring actors and actresses trying to get into the industry, what would be your best advice for how to deal with nerves? Because I know that can play a big issue in people trying to get in. They're too scared and they're like, no, I don't want to do this. Yeah. Um, embrace them. Um, nerves are not a bad thing. They show that you care. You obviously need to um, kind of have them under control, but you get that from training. So uh, my very first scene that I shot in, in Fair City, um, I was so nervous that like when they did all the lovely makeup and everything, one of my eyes went bloodshot out of pure nervousness. I was like, oh my God, of all the days, I have like one white eye, totally bright, and one red eye, that's not attractive. Like, why would this happen today? I'm about to shoot my first scene, like, please go away. And then the producer came down to welcome me to the show and I was like, oh no, she's gonna fire me. I've got like a red eye like this. <laughs> and that was just all nerves and um, yeah, so she, she kind of was very supportive and uh, didn't, you know, probably sees it all the time, you know. Um, and, and then another time I, when I was doing a stunt and I had, a, I had to use a gun and they, they, I'd never done this before and they gave it to me for rehearsal and it wasn't a prop gun. It was a real gun that wasn't loaded. And I was like, Whoa, that's okay. I don't need to hold that. I'll just do it for the take. And they were like, there you go. Take it. It's like, okay. So, so I was like shaking, like not Carrie Ann, Jenny Dixon was shaking. 
hold it, holding this gun. And I just use it in the scene because in the scene, Carrie Ann isn't used to holding a gun. So the nerves as Jenny were fine actually there. Um, yeah. Because, so I used those nerves. So, so, so nerves can be used so long as you, you, you don't lose control. Like if you're playing a really sassy, confident character, use the nerves to make you sassy and confident. So uh, some of the best actors I've met have been chilled, quiet people, you know, shy, nervous, and they're brilliant actors because they keep it all for in front of the camera. So don't, 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 don't have any, uh, they're, they're some of my favorite actors to meet. Other actors are on all the time. They're great showmen and that's great too, but there's no, there's no difference in, in, um, how well you can do depending on if you're nervous and shy and quiet or if you're Will Smith, you know, the ultimate entertainer showman, mm -hmm. you can still be an awesome actor regardless of which end of the spectrum you're on. So if you, everything went all well, you got your dream role, what would that role be? And like, who would be your dream, like three actors that you could work with? Amy Adams, love her. <laughs> Love her. I could just do a full stop after that, like everybody else be a bonus. Um, let me see who else. Well, Keith from ten years ago in LA, like I'd love to work with him again. That that that'd be lovely. Um, uh, let me see. Uh, Shay Mitchell, I got I got to I got to meet as well. So. We lovely to, to work with her um yeah I, I i i think amy does so much great talent that uh yeah it would be it would be i'd just be honored to be to be with any of them um sir Ronan, that that'd be cool actually uh that'd be that'd be a nice one um yeah so so they would be some some batch of actors that i would like to and and dream dream role wise <laughs> I could do sci-fi, that'd be cool. I could do action, that could be cool. Comedy, a rom-com. Um, yeah, there, there's there's so, there, I think actually Netflix at the moment is where there's a lot of great shows. So I look at these shows. Uh, there was one I, I really enjoyed called Glow. I'm not sure if you saw it, about, about the female wrestlers. Um, they were all these actresses who faked being. And then another show I'm liking is Never Have I Ever. Um, yeah. Jane Krakowski is another actress as well. She was in Ally McBeal. She was in, is it 30 Rock? Um, yes. Yeah. Was and I've been, compared, I've been compared to her before. So I think it'd be funny if, if I had some scenes with her because I've gotten that so much over, over in LA. That'd be great. Sounds like it'd be an interesting watch. Yes. Um, <laughs> oh, Amanda, Amanda Seyfried as well as the one. She's really good as well, very good actress. And since you've been in the um, performing industry and acting industry, who would you say has been your biggest inspiration in the industry? Biggest inspiration? Um, it's a mixture, it's a mixture of my, of my friends. Um, of my friends who've been around me through through the acting journey and classes and that that they'd inspire me. Also, I I have, I have some friends in LA, Jesse Daly, and um and and they all started acting around the same time as me, and and it's like a family. So they support all my stuff, and they're like, "Yay, go Fair City!" But Fair City's not in in LA, so they they're they're just really supportive. So my friends in LA will be one huge inspiration. All the great things they're doing. Um. And and then, I, I guess the actresses like Isla Fisher and um, um, Mar were all in big soaps in Australia, Home and Away, and, and so on. And, and then and then did some great movies. Like I, I admire them for what they've done. They they've done great. So great um, work on a soap. last question because our time's already up. So the big important one is that you're going to be at Perform this year. 
So what can people expect from you this year? Oh, yes, I can't wait for that. So that's November in the RDS and, and uh, Perform Ireland. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be great. It's like two days, isn't it? I think it's not even more, two, two days running. Um, just making sure my battery doesn't go. So it, if, if it goes, just I'll plug it in. But I, I think I'm okay for a while. Uh, I'm talking too much. I'm, I'm, I'm blowing my battery out. Um, yes, yeah, so it's going to be great. It's going to be um, inspiring confident confidence building uh a safe environment to try some things out and just get a sample of um a sample of i guess what i studied in la so i studied comedy in la and and also brand building so so building your brand so what is it that you're selling you know you're not going to sell everything there's three of us here on the screen and lots joining in and listening and thanks for everyone who's doing who's doing that um, but we all have a different brand, so we would all play a different part. And I, I love that kind of brand building. Um, yeah, so what is it you're selling? So we're each selling a different package. Are you the sporty girl? Are you the the funny guy? Are you the um, the weird chick? Are you the goth? Are you the, what are you selling? And they're all great products to sell. Uh, yeah, so 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 building your brand and and then some of the magic rules of comedy I will be bringing into it. So um, what you must do to make something funny in a sitcom and what you must not do. Well, that sounds like it's going to be a very very entertaining and informative <laughs> workshop. You know. Yeah, it's it's a, it's bringing it's bringing the LA thing in into into Dublin and. Uh, some of the some of the some of the really cool stuff that I like to study when I'm in LA. So bringing that to Dublin, and um, for film and TV. Well, I think that wraps up everything. Unless we have any more questions, mm -hmm. I don't think there is. No, I think that wraps everything up. So we just want to say thank you so much, Jenny, for just giving us some of your time tonight, and just answering all the questions that everyone had for you. Um, it's been great getting to know Jenny Dixon and we can't wait to see what you have to offer us in November, which is just around the corner. <laughs> yeah, no, thanks so much for having me on. It's, it was, it's been lovely. It's a lovely kind of positive group for Form Ireland and a lot of talent, talent there to be showcased between dancing and singing and acting. And yeah, especially right now when the arts has had such a backstage, it's lovely now for us all to go, we're back. And and and, ju and just go and have fun because that's the thing. Like you know, I never I never thought beyond that. Just having fun and loving it, and then if breaks come from that, they come from it, and that's great. That that's exciting. But really, just have fun, have loads of fun, and love us, and keep getting better um, at it. So yeah, I'm looking forward to meeting everybody in November in the RDS. And yeah, I can already picture it, the music, the, the lights, the, uh, and the, 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 there's a great lineup. You guys have a great team on board of lots of great actors and actresses from, from all around. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a, a fun, fun few days. So thank you for having me. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. So much. Thank you. We'll let everybody go have their, have their cup of tea now. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Bye. Okay, bye.